if you have Bibles here, you can bring it out. Um, but actually today, before we start reading uh, this week's section, I actually wanted to open up with three riddles. So um, I'm going to read three of them. You can focus on one of them that stands out to you. And at the end of uh, today's discussion, uh, I'm going to ask what you guys, what your answers were for one of the riddles. So riddle number one, I call the hundred dollar bill. So a woman has a thousand dollars as 10 100 dollar bills and she loses one of them. She goes to her pantry, she takes out her expensive lamp and her expensive oil, she fills up the lamp with the oil and she lights it. She gets her broom and she sweeps her whole house and inch by inch with her lit lamp looks diligently for this hundred dollar bill. When she finally finds it, she calls her friends and invites them and goes to each of her neighbor's houses and invites them saying, come and celebrate with me because I found my hundred dollar bill. And she throws a huge party. So the question for the first riddle is what does that hundred dollar bill represent? The second riddle is the buried treasure. So man has a metal detector and is treasure hunting in an open field. One day he finds a box full of priceless treasures and takes it and buries it in another field to hide it again. Then he goes and sells all his furniture. He sells his TV, his car and his home and everything he owns and buys the field where he buried the treasure. Uh, the question for that riddle is what does the treasure represent? And the final riddle is the two sons. So there's a man who has two adult sons and he owns a company, and he hires his oldest son, saying, I need you to go to the office today. But his son responds, saying, no, not today. But then later on, he changes his mind, and he goes into work. The dad went to the second son and told him the same thing, that he needs him to go to the office and work. And the second son responded, yes, sir, I will go now. But he didn't go at all. So what does this situation mirror in... Um, uh, in the Bible. Um, so those are the three riddles. Okay, so to our reading. Today's reading is John 6, 59 to 71. I'm just going to kind of crank things up here. Okay, John 6, 59, 71. Uh, so this is talking about Jesus' teaching. It says, These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. So that then many of his disciples heard, when they heard this, said, oh, I guess I should give some context. So Jesus just talked about um, how his disciples will eat his flesh and drink his blood. Obviously, that's pretty gross, right? Right off the bat, what is he talking about? Cannibalism. He's got a large crowd of disciples at this point. It's not just the twelve. And everyone is like pretty, pretty disturbed by what he just said. So he's, he goes to his disciples, this group of people, and uh, the disciples say to him, this statement is very unpleasant. Who can listen to this? But Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining about this. And he said to them, is this offensive to you? What then if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh provides no benefit. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some, some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he was saying, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples left and would no longer walk with him. So I think lots of people kind of skip over that verse, but many disciples of Jesus left and they didn't walk after him any longer. So Jesus said to the 12, you do not want to leave also, do you? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
You have the words of eternal life, and we have already believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered him, Did I myself not choose you, the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil. Now he meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So Jesus was speaking uh, in Capernaum in the synagogue there. And what he had said was, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in yourself. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, the one who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came out of heaven, referring to the manna from heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, the one who eats this bread will live forever. So uh, just to kind of give a little bit more context on that too, uh, the New Testament is recorded in Koine Greek. And the Greek that the, um, the writer of this gospel chose when he was talking about eating Jesus' flesh, he uses two different words. The first word is um, phago or estheo, and that means to eat or devour or consume. But in the second part of the verse, he switches to the word um, trogo, which means to crunch, to chew, and to gnaw like to gnaw on a bone and to crunch and chew on his flesh. So um, the crowd, yeah, to the crowds, this sounded like cannibalism. Ew. Yeah, ew. <laughs> Many in the crowd were really shocked and disgusted um, by what Jesus was telling them. But Jesus was speaking to them in a metaphor. And this is kind of why I decided to open up with the riddles. Um, the reason why, or one of the reasons Jesus spoke in metaphors or in parables was to fulfill prophecy. Um, you can look in Mark chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, and it says, And he was saying to them, To you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God, but for those who are outside, everything comes in parables, so that while they may see and not perceive, and while hearing, they may hear and not understand. Otherwise, they might return and it, would not, and it would be forgiven them. So in this verse, Jesus is actually quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting Isaiah 6, 9 and 10, Isaiah 43, 8, Jeremiah 5, 21, and Ezekiel 12, 2. Um, on the study notes, I have like the list of all the verses that Jesus is quoting for that. Um, so yeah, Jesus is saying not only do we need to consume him, but we have to chew and gnaw and crunch on his flesh. Um, this makes a lot more sense when we remember that Jesus is the word of God and that he talks about his flesh being true food, talking about food for our souls. Uh, food and drink is a metaphor commonly used um, for spiritual nourishment of our soul. Uh, we, and the one and only thing that nourishes our soul is Jesus, is God. And Jesus alone. Um, so that gnawing and chewing on his flesh is spending time, devoted time, in meditation, in contemplating um, the daily teachings of Jesus, the example that uh, Jesus lived on earth. Um, yeah, this parabolic language that Jesus used um, was a mysterious form of teaching. And it was difficult to understand, and as we see, it was very controversial. Many people walked away. Um, being controversial sometimes can draw very large crowds, and uh, even with the growing crowd um, of people coming because he was healing them, uh, he continued to speak in riddles and in parables. Uh, his disciples would get confused very uh, often, um, and... Uh, when, when earlier in John, when we were reading about the woman at the well, we can see Jesus says something mysterious. The woman asks a question, and then he answers with another question. Instead of just giving a simple one-word answer and just 
halting the conversation. Jesus is continuing to ask questions to make us ponder and think about what, what he's really saying. Um, this is an excerpt from Luke 12, 31 and 36. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted from earth, will draw all people to myself. Now he was saying this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd then answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ is to remain forever. How is it that you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said to them, For a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. Also, the one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus proclaimed as he went away and hid him, uh, and he went away and hid himself from them. So this hyperbolic type of language should capture our attention. It should pique our curiosity and it should cause us to want to look deeper, to not just skim through it and walk away and forget what was said. Um, Jesus tells us that his sheep will recognize his voice and will follow him. This is in John 10, 27. So, um, so that the outer group would hear riddles and be confused, uh, but then to those who are faithful to him and followed him and sought him, to his disciples, he would comp explain the parables, what they meant, and would teach them the spiritual truths that they referred to. Uh, you can see this in Mark 4, 10 to 12, and Matthew 13, 10 and 17. So his promises through scripture is that if we seek him, we will find him, as it says in Matthew 7, 7. And he tells us that he is calling us to him. Will we respond to his call? Um, so back to the riddles. Does anyone have an answer for what the $100 bill represented? Uh, can we do table discussion? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do table discussion. Um, yeah, the three riddles just a reminder, the $100 bill, the buried treasure, and the two sons. Um, the, I guess the spoiler is all of these riddles are reworded parables, just using it in different words to think about it in a new context. Um, just because sometimes when you read the same parable over and over, it kind of gets cliched. You don't really think about it in, in different ways. Um, so yeah, the section that the $100 bill was from was from Luke 15, 8 to 10. And yeah, Jesus explains that it's one sinner who repents. Uh, the buried treasure is uh, taken from Matthew 13, 44. And the hidden treasure represents the kingdom of heaven. He sells everything he has when he finds the kingdom of heaven and uh, sells everything he owns to purchase the land that has that. Um, the third one is the two sons, and uh, I had trouble kind of thinking of how to word, like, what, what the truth that this is reflecting is, or um, that, but this section of scripture was taken from Matthew. This isn't scripture, uh, but this riddle is um, taken from Matthew 21, 28 to 32, uh, and that is... Uh, Jesus talking about two sons. And then he explains, truly I tell you that the tax collectors and prostitutes will get into heaven, get into the kingdom of God, sorry, before you. For John came to you in the way of the righteous and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe in him. And you seeing this did not even have second thoughts. And so Jesus is speaking to actually the Pharisees um, in this um, part of scripture. So another kind of more visceral way to think about that. Um, Jesus is talking to religious leaders, right? He's talking to modern day evangelists or missionaries. And he's telling them that politicians and sex workers are going to get into heaven, get into heaven before they will. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's something that should shock you, right? Just, wait, what? But, but not just be shocked and leave from there, but to think about, okay, 
What does, what does this mean? What is God's will for us? What, what is he seeking in us? Um, yeah, and uh, over and over again in the New Testament, we see how God's heart is for the broken, the lost, uh, those who people look down on, like the tax collectors, prostitutes, um, where society doesn't show them the respect that they deserve. And uh, yeah, we should be we should be thinking about that. That um, how what are we doing to show God's heart in our world? Uh, that's everything I had today for this section. Mm-hmm.